Hey everyone, it is Ryan here with Sailing Viridian. So I'm actually recording this voiceover and screen recording a little bit out of chronological order. I had reached out to the gentleman who owns this 1994 Benetou 35 on, I want to say a Thursday or a Friday, and asking if my girlfriend and I could go and take a look at his boat. Uh, so he got back to us late Friday night and basically told us he was out of town, but if we wanted to go to the marina, they would give us the keys and we could check out the boat. So he emailed us late Friday night. We woke up Saturday, uh, basically saw the email and just hopped in the car. So I didn't have enough time to actually record the voiceover, you know, detailing the Craigslist ad before we actually got to look at the boat in person. So it's a little bit out of sync. Um, but one important thing to note is that throughout multiple points in the video, I mentioned that I think the boat is manufactured in the 1980s. Um, it's actually in 1994, which just goes to show how rushed uh, this boat tour really was. Um, but yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and look at our tour of this Benetou 35. We are on our way to check out a Benetou 35. Mm -hmm. I actually don't remember what year it is, but it's down a little bit south of Annapolis. So I figured we'd film it. This is the first one out of all the uh, multiple boat owners I've emailed that's actually uh, allowed us to kind of move forward and, and check it out. So you said it's pretty a 30, excited. 35. Yeah, it's 35. So it's yeah, it's a, a 352, I believe. On um, the smaller end. Yeah, and I want to I want to say it's a 19. 80s somewhere in the 80s um, but it's been on the hard for a while and it was weird because some of the photos looked a little bit old but the boat looked in really good condition but I think the photos were from like 2012 or 2013 so we'll see what kind of condition it's in once we get there so we're here in the boat um, like mm -hmm. I thought the pictures were a little bit old <laughs> Very. you can see what we're what we're standing on here um, so it is a pretty, pretty roomy boat. Um, I like the layout, the floor plan, and everything. Thirty-seven, like we like, or thirty-five. Yeah, you said 35. we're like on the lower end of what we wanted, and I'm realizing that thirty-five is plenty big. Yeah, we can go bigger, I'm yeah. sure, but. And like I said, it's more about the year too, because like yeah. an older forty-footer is going to have less interior room than like yeah. a newer let's say, I don't know, 37 or 35 footer mm -hmm. potentially. In terms of the layout, yeah. I like it. So I think, I could be wrong, I thought this was a 1980s, but um, maybe maybe it's a little bit newer after looking back at the Craigslist listing. Um, but he is asking 24000 I believe. Mm -hmm. um, the main problem that he mentioned is the keel bolt bolts are pretty rusted, um, which I would definitely concur with. <laughs> this one, there isn't even like, the, the top of the bolt doesn't even exist anymore. Um, so he did estimate about 5,000 to replace the keel bolts. Um, overall, I think, I mean, the interior is in good condition. What do you think, Sid? That's a little raunchy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a little bit. I mean, you just get them steamed. But, yeah. I mean, you know, woodwork, everything's pretty good. Yeah. Um, it's not horrible. The, the only other kind of concerning thing, and there's some water, but it was raining today, so you can see the water was coming down there. There's a little peek of butt. <laughs> um, the other concerning thing, here, if you mind holding the camera for me real quick, Sid. pretty rusted and corroded in a lot of places. The guy said it was rebuilt in 2006. Turn the brightness down, it's kind of messing up the, the white levels. Um, you can see there's some water, it looks like leaking out of one of the coolant hoses down there. Um, it's pretty wet down below the engine too. Um, and this, this boat's on the hard, um, I don't know if I mentioned that, but I think that the water down there is actually due to the water coming down from the uh, the rain here earlier this morning. So, engine slightly concerning. 
Um, even though it was rebuilt, it still looks like it's kind of seen some, some better days. Um, pretty, pretty rusted. So looking kind of at the rest of the boat, you know, pretty, pretty standard um, layout. I actually do like the fact that this is like kind of curved. It's pretty, um, has, has a lot of open space. Uh, even, you know, even with the, the floor taken up, you can still kind of see it's pretty roomy. Standard galley, um, lots of storage. Um, stove seems to be in working condition and the gimbal works pretty well. Uh, it does have a fridge um, or potentially a freezer that looks to be like on a DC system, um, which is nice, so that's, that's pretty good. There also is air conditioning. So you can see that's the AC vent over there. Uh, it's the only vent I've seen though, so I'm not sure if that's, if it's just a one vent system or I don't even know where it's stored. And fortunately, I didn't realize when we got here that uh, we have to leave by three. Yeah. We got here at like 2.30, <laughs> so we've been kind of rushing through everything. So sorry if the video seems kind of rushed because it is. <laughs> <laughs> So, and this is the, the V-Birth up here. Pretty oh, there's cup holders. Pretty nice. Yeah, yeah, some cup holders That's down there. That's a good idea. Yeah, some water bottles or whatever while you're sleeping. We should write down, like, a list of things we see from the boats yeah. that we visit that we want to incorporate into yeah. our boat. Yeah, yeah. That's a good idea. Cup holder in the V-Birth. <laughs> <laughs> some fishing rods. I do like there's a lot of natural light, so it's got, like, multiple um, pore holes to kind of see out. One up there. And then saw that one in the in the uh, V birth, and then a couple other in the V birth as well. Um, but lots of storage, which is really nice. And there's even a uh, that's a little wine storage back there, which was pretty funny. Um, lots of kind of antique looking stuff, but it has been you know a while since the um, boat seems to have been you know kind of in a little bit more of a presentable and able condition and you can see a lot of the the bilge gunk down there looking kind of gunky but looks like it's got some through hole sensors there um like i said unfortunately the gps plotter was stolen by someone else who came to look at the boat um because like i mentioned he's out of town so i kind of just he just said yeah go ahead and get the keys from the marina bathroom's actually super spacious which is much, much bigger than what we're used to for a bathroom. Because on my Catalina 27, it was just a bucket. <laughs> but this has a full shower. Um, same thing, lots of natural light, which is really nice. A lot of mold everywhere, though. It's pretty, pretty stinky. Um, that's the aft cabin. So it goes back there pretty far. But overall, I mean, the, I really like the layout of the boat. And it's got a lot of places to hold on to. Yeah. Um, I, d I don't know if it's if it's blue water certified, like what the rating is for it. Um, I'd have to have to do some looking online. But like I said, this was a this was a quick one. I emailed the guy a couple days ago, and he was like, "Yeah, just go ahead and check it mm -hmm. out." So we kind of last minute decided to um, come check it out. I like the wood. Yeah, yeah, the wood looks nice. Um, yeah, definitely. It's a little little moldy here and there, but overall, it's I mean, all the woods in, in really good condition. There's the um, AC, uh, DC, or that's, excuse me, that's all DC, that panel there. Um, it's got an additional panel, uh, which is interesting, and then just a VHF radio and the um, CD player, it looks like, and a couple speakers. It's got some standard, it looks like 6.5 inch car speakers, but I mean, overall, pretty, pretty nice, uh, pretty nice interior, I think. And uh, let's go up and check out the deck. Yeah. So we turned the uh, key back in, and like I said, we were a little rushed. So um, we're now here out on the outside of the boat, and we can kind of take our time out here, which is nice uh, since you know, we don't need the, the key to get on the boat. <laughs> but I guess kind of starting from the rear here, uh, it does have supports for a dinghy, which is nice. Um, the, it comes with a just a small rubber plastic dinghy um, as well as an outboard here um, and the outboard needs a new carburetor I believe the guy selling it uh, told me but 
I mean, pretty pretty solid liveaboard. I mean, it has all of the kind of base amenities you need for a good liveaboard between the AC, the fridge, um, you know, as well as the the um, kind of dinghy mounts here. It has a nice swim platform, uh, which is pretty sweet. Ladder down there. And uh, teak would need to be refinished, but overall in pretty good condition. Doesn't seem to be sagging at all anywhere. You notice any saggy spots on the uh, deck up there? Um, no. No? But definitely needs, I mean, needs a little bit of work on the exterior. You can see some of the paint there on the, um, that kind of curved piece. The wood on the door needs to be refinished. And there was a little bit of water leaking in, um, but Overall, I mean, it seems in pretty, pretty, you know, good condition. Definitely needs a little bit of work. Here's the um, the helm here. So I would um, need a uh, GPS. Looks like we've got a multifunction display there. A wind display. Now I'll be eating while you're sailing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's nice. I didn't even know. Or I'll be drinking some wine yeah. with a charcuterie board. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> then you got to pull that back up there. That's the um, that's the compass. Oh, this. Yeah, push it back. It? Other way. Yeah, there you go. It's like it's like the eye. Yeah, I know the orb, the secret orb. Which way are we facing? North, northwest. Yeah. I don't trust them. <laughs> Why don't you trust it? Something seems off. What? The compass? <laughs> Just compasses in general. Compasses in general. Weirdo. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm gonna look at the, the rigging too. That was my old boat had some, some brand new rigging. Standing rigging. <laughs> yeah, get it down. Let me figure out how to get it back oh, down. There you go. So it's got the comes with covers for the winches, which is nice. Definitely a lot bigger than my 27. <laughs> so these are the ones you put it in and go shh, shh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. And he's got all the lines running to the um, cockpit here, which is definitely pretty nice. Oh, that is nice. See, it's all yeah, labeled? Yeah, you can see them. Yep, they're all labeled and they're all, they all run directly either up to the mast um, or uh, up to the uh, jib up there. They were at a hat, so it was allowed to show us how this works. Or do you know how to do it? No, I mean you would just you know read the read those. I mean you probably I probably have to spend some time messing around with them to see what does what. Yeah. Um, but the, the lines the lines look in okay condition. Some of them have some some mold on them, but you know, that's to be expected. with it sitting here on the hard for a while. So I guess let's walk up and check out the front. This is the the Dodger frame here. I don't know where the actual Dodger is, and then the Bimini back here, which is probably either put away in storage or somewhere in the boat that I unfortunately didn't have time to <laughs> go see. Handrails here a little, little, it's seen some better days, but I mean it's just some easy woodwork. Tow rail's pretty good condition, it's all aluminum, and the deck seems pretty, pretty nice. Cleats are good. So look up at the rigging in the top of the mast. Looks like that's potentially a fan or a vent. It doesn't have any um, uh, permanent vents or scoops. I guess all your airflow would be coming from the, uh, any of the um, portholes you open up. Let's see what else we got up here. So, do have the you know furler. Apparently, the sails are in pretty good condition from what the uh, owner said. Take a look at the furler down there, and then so the anchors mounted on the front, which is nice. Looks, uh, I can't remember what the brand of the anchor is, but it looks similar. I can't remember the name of the structure. I always forget the different types of anchors, but it looks similar to like the Rockna um, style. 
Let's see if I can get this other part up in here. Take a look in. Okay, so it's got a nice, nice manual windlass there. Chain's a little, <laughs> a little rusty, but it's like, oh no, it's is it is it electric? Oh, I think it is electric. Those are the controls for it there. And then it's got the, the full back um, uh, piece to, to hook a um, lever on in the event that the electric fails. That's nice. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's got two spots for anchors. I don't know if that's standard. Not really used to boats this big. But it's nice to see that it's electric. Um, like I said, I'm, it seems like back in the day it was probably potentially maybe fully specced out between the AC, the fridge, um, I mean I don't know if the uh, dinghy mount is aftermarket, but I mean pretty pretty uh, killer setup for, for $24,000. Um, you know, need some work, but Overall, I mean, it seems like it's in pretty, pretty good condition here. Rigging's pretty tight. Uh, it's got a little, a little uh, pulley here for a flag. <laughs> See this, Sid? Mm. It's got a little flag pulley, so you can hang a flag oh, up there. Yeah, oh, see the, cute. yeah, the pulley up there. It's got this plastic covering on the. Uh, Standing rig. I've never, never seen that before. All looks, all looks in pretty good condition. Look, there's cup four. holders. Oh uh, yeah, there you go. There's a hose hook up too. <laughs> One thing is the portholes are a little, um, kind of that that cracked, sun damaged, you know, look to them. Um, you know, to be expected for a boat, boat this old. Overall, it's in pretty good condition. And I haven't noticed any saggy spots on the deck here, which is always a good sign. Wearing my very stylish Merrill hiking boots. I don't know if the boat yard's gonna be muddy from all the rain. Oh, it's got some external speakers down there. I'd probably replace them now. <laughs> Have you checked under any of the um, any storage bins here? Not. See what's in there. Is this going? Yeah, so you can push it in. <laughs> oh wow, the whole thing comes up. So it's got a... Uh, it's heavy. So it's got um... Uh, cables, electrical cables, looks like a hose, fire extinguisher, fuel tank, bucket, you know, just the standard... Standard stuff you need for a boat. Oh, was that? Oh, never mind. It's like some aluminum mounting for something. I thought it was an anchor for a second. Maybe for the dinghy. What's your fingers? Good, I got it. Got it? Yeah. Let's see what else we got here. I don't know how this one opens. Oh, I think. Can you open that one back up, honey? I think you need to open that. To... Yeah. Want to hold that up? Mm -hmm. I got it. I'll drop it on my hand. <laughs> oh, there's the. Um, there's propane. So that's probably for the stove inside and then this is for the um it comes i think i believe he said it has a uh, like a little barbecue grill off the back one of those magma grills so that's probably for that or potentially as a backup but pretty cool strong <laughs> here's the uh the name plate there let's see if i can get a better, better angle i actually can't even read it from the, this angle so it's a, oh wow, it's a 1994. Okay, well, <laughs> I'll Someone let a little, it uh, deteriorate. Little, little, little <laughs> off with the uh, 1980s thought, and I think that makes sense based off of the layout we saw inside, which was much more spacious than 1980s. That is a ton of storage down there. That goes down so deep. Yeah. Crab traps, life jackets, um, 
looks like there's some like a tackle box down there. Can we try to make ours a bit organized? Yeah. Oh, there's the batteries yeah. back there. Okay. That's the that's the DC battery bank. And a bunch of a bunch of lines. Mm. And then oh, that's probably for the windlass. What the if pump. I like trap you in there? You were bad. Well, I mean, it's a good point because once this thing shuts, I mean, I don't I think you can. Is there like an emergency? Hatch? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I guess you can try to pull that pull little knob. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they know where you're pulling. Oh, maybe if you get yeah. your nail in there. What's in that storage locker there, Sid? That looks like a bunch of the um, tubing for the holding tank. Uh, I don't know what the blue tubing is. Maybe, maybe the blue is for the holding tank. Potentially the exhaust. Um, yeah, I have to look and see what everything's for. But, you know, pretty, pretty standard back there. These things are dangerous. Yeah, they're very heavy. They're going to take your fingers off too every time. Yeah, you that's what I'm saying. It, it does have, looks like AIS. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, it seems, it seems like whoever set this boat up used it for some long-term cruising. Yeah, but... You think? It's a little... Looks like it kind of just sat for a while. Yeah, no, I agree. Mm -hmm. um, but it definitely has a lot of the base amenities for long-term cruising. I mean, it's rare to see something with a dinghy rack, you know? That's really, okay. I mean, only if you're long-term cruising. If you're just sailing it, you don't really need a dinghy. What do you think? What's your verdict? No. No? Why? It's a lot of work. You saw the engine. Yeah. It's too much. Too much? There's plenty of other boats up there and we'll find a better one. What would you think if this one was in better shape? Then yeah. If yeah. it was in better shape, yeah. Yeah. I feel like there's too much work that needs to be done with it. Yeah. I feel like if we get a surveyor out here, they're going to find even more. Yeah. Surveyor's not going to find less. They're going to find more. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It is, it is pretty beat up for a 94. I mean, I think it would have made sense if it was an 80 for the kind of shape it's in, but it seems like for a, uh, what's that, a 16 year old boat, 15 year old boat. Mm -hmm. It's definitely, definitely sat for a while with some minimal work done to it. But I guess let's go down and take a look underneath and see, it was supposedly repainted pretty recently. Take a look at that. So here's the bottom. Uh, the seller said it was recently painted. It does look like it's got some, you know, chipping here and there. Which is a little concerning. It still has the, the tape on it from when it was painted. <laughs> the exhaust port. Yeah, and he hasn't he hasn't repainted under the uh, under the stands there. So here's the propeller. The keel. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it looks like he's, they're just repainting over the base without even, I mean, really sanding it down. Which isn't really a good, good sign in my opinion. Looks like it's been dinged a little bit. Which is I've dinged my old 27 quite a few times myself. Yeah, lots of lots of chips and divots and stuff. So definitely, it's definitely concerning. I don't know when the seacocks were last serviced or addressed. There's the thorn holes I was looking at earlier. Here's just one final look from the back. I don't think I got a shot of this. So I just wanted to show kind of the full full view of it. So that concludes the tour of the 1994 Benetou 352. I've had a little bit of time to kind of sit down, talk with Sydney, and think a little bit more about this boat. Um, and I also was able to actually email the owner a couple of key questions I had about the boat's maintenance. 
Um, so I think you'll, you'll, you'll kind of pick up on the undertone of the video uh, was that the boat itself, you know, it's a great boat, relatively newer, you know, 94 is definitely newer compared to a lot of the other boats we've been looking at online. Um, it gave us a really good feel for the interior size of a newer 35 foot sailboat. Um, and, I, and I think when you make that jump from a 1980s to a 1990s sailboat, if you have a 35 foot and a 35 foot, the newer 35 foot is always going to have a lot more interior space. Um, it's going to have that rear swim platform, and it's also generally going to have a lot nicer amenities such as AC, uh, potentially heat, um, as well as you know, a nicer, larger bathroom. Um, and I think that's just due to the enhancements in engineering the fiberglass hull and the ability to, let's say, you know, increase curvature, increase headroom, um, and just provide a larger interior space. So it was really good for Sydney and I to kind of get out there and see this boat, just to get a feel for the size and the style of a newer 1990s sailboat. Um, I did ask the owner a couple of questions, more so focused on engine maintenance, uh, hull maintenance, and sail maintenance. Um, so he actually bought the boat down in Miami uh, back in 2008, and then he sailed it up the coast to Annapolis, uh, where it has been in the water up until September of 2019, um, which was when he brought it out on the hard, winterized it, um, and it's been sitting there ever since. So the, the photos were definitely a little bit older than the current state of the boat, um, as you could see from the difference between the, the Craigslist listing and the um, you know, in-person visit of the boat. But a lot of the interior was really just cosmetic. Um, you know, it needed a good scrubbing, a good cleaning. I was more concerned about the st uh, state of the motor. Um, there was a lot of corrosion and rust on different parts of the motor. Some of the coolant hoses looked like they had been leaking. Um, I couldn't tell if the water at the base of the motor was due to leaking coolant hoses, um, which would be weird if the engine was winterized, um, or if it was from rain you know, coming in the, uh, the hatch there. Since it was raining that morning, we looked at the boat. Additionally, I uh, was concerned uh, about those keel bolts, which he did preface, uh, and I was able to talk to him about that, and he actually has a quote from the local marina that it's stored at uh, to uh, essentially remove the keel, replace the bolts, and then put the keel back on. Um, and that quote is about $5,000. Um, so that's not his estimate. You know, he has the paperwork for the quote and everything, um, which is good. But I agree that those keel bolts were definitely <laughs> a little concerning looking. Uh, they weren't even really bolts anymore, in my opinion. They were just lumps of rust. Um, so that would, was to be expected since that was in the Craigslist listing. The other thing I was a little bit concerned about was the uh, state of the paint job. So it had been newly repainted, but it looks like it has been quite a while since anyone has actually sanded down uh, the boat to take off a couple layers of some of the older bottom paint. Um, there were multiple spots where it was kind of, you know, chipped, similar to an old house, you know, where you just keep painting over the old paint over and over and over again, you know, eventually some of that paint that's on the you know, bottom layer is going to get loose, fall off, and then you're left with, uh, you know, a big paint chip. So there were quite a few sections um, of, of, of chips throughout the hall. Um, not, a, not a huge deal. Um, there, there might be some water that has gotten, you know, under some of those chips and hopefully has not started to permeate the hall too much. Um, I, I didn't have any sort of, um, you know, those moisture sensors to check the moisture level um, of the hull. Um, but, you know, after, after thinking about it, um, like I said, I, it gave us a really good feel for the size of the boat. I do think the boat is a really good deal. Uh, $25,000 for, you know, a, a, a mid-1990s 35-foot sailboat is a very good deal. Um, however, I think Sydney and I are looking for something a little bit more turnkey. Um, and the, the, the motor was really kind of the uh, worrying factor um, since, I mean, it was rebuilt in 2006 or 2008, I want to say, but it just looked like it had been in kind of a, a state of potential disrepair since then. Um, keel bolts, 
know, that would be a relatively straightforward fix. And then paint is just sanding and repainting. Um, but the motor was kind of a uh, unfortunate surprise. Um, so I think, unfortunately, Sid and I are going to have to pass on this boat. Um, but like I said, I do think it was a really good idea for us to go look at it, get a feel for the amenities of a newer boat, the interior size. Um, and we did find out that we really, really liked the uh, interior layout. So the fact that it had that kind of curved seating area with the table, I really think that uh, that floor plan or that layout is something that we want to look for in a future boat rather than having kind of side-by-side -side seat cushions. Um, that, that curved seat really gave it a larger feel of the interior um, while still providing ample amount of seating area. Um, and as well, uh, Sid was a uh, big, big fan of the bathroom. That's, that's you know, one of her um, uh, most important <laughs> aspects of the boat. Um, so she really liked that large style bathroom. And I do have to admit, it was very spacious. Uh, it would be very, um, very nice to take a shower in there. You would not be cramped. So long story short, uh, I know this, this voiceover has gone probably a little bit longer than I had planned. Um, but like I said, I think we're going to pass on this one, um, unless for whatever reason it's still for sale in the next month or two. Maybe we'll come back and, and take another look. But uh, like I said, this was a really good opportunity for us to get out there and start looking at um, boats in this size and in this price range. And hopefully we will have some additional boat tours for you all in the coming weeks and months as we continue to look for our sailboat. Thanks for watching.